Hi everyone, uh, this is the course EC657A. The course instructor is Professor Mark Crowley. I am Benjamin Gojok, the TA and presenter of the slides. Uh, this is the lecture on variational autoencoder. Okay, so first I uh, show you some data set notations. Assume that we have a training data set we, uh, where each uh, data point uh, is denoted by xi, so the i data point is denoted by xi. We have n data points and uh, the dimensionality of data is d. We, uh, the vectors uh, here are column vectors and we put the vectors column-wise in matrices. So if we put them column-wise, we'll have a d by n matrix, uh, capital X. And assume that we have embeddings of these training data, which are the latent factors. We assume here that every data point xi is generated by a latent factor or latent variable zi uh, and this is a probabilistic graphical model that we are showing so uh, and this latent factor is kind of uh, if we take it to be a low dimensional variable and if xi is high dimensional then this can be considered as an as the embedding of x i two. Uh, so z i uh, assume that it is a p-dimensional uh, vector, and we have n of n data points. And if we put them column wise, we'll have a matrix z, uh, which is p by n. Uh, x is d-dimensional. P is less than or equal to d. We usually we have p is uh, much less than d. Uh, in variational auto variational inference version and variational autoencoder, we assume this probabilistic graphical model that I am showing here. Uh, but uh, there are some other probabilistic approaches, uh, like uh, factor analysis and uh, probabilistic PCA, where we also assume that there is noise. So X i is uh, assumed uh, to be summation of some latent variable here and some noise uh, but here we don't have noise in uh, the concept of uh, variational inference and variational autoencoder uh, uh, first we explain evidence lower bound consider the Bayes rule this is Bayes rule so the uh, probability of zi given xi is probability of x i given z i uh, multiplied by uh, prior on z i divided by prior on x i. If we have a parameter theta uh, for the conditional probability of z i given x i, then we can say probability of z i given x i and theta. Th this parameter can also be also seen as a random variable. Then the base rule is changed to this. So. Let us cons uh, consider the KL divergence between uh, QZI and the uh, pr probability of ZI given XI and theta I. Okay. Uh, first of all, I tell you that this is uh, this is the light called likelihood this is called posterior these are priors on zi and xi uh, consider qzi as the prior on zi and this is the posterior uh, we want to see what is the kale di di divergence between the qzi and the posterior of zi given xi uh, with the parameter theta uh, what is scale divergence? It is one, one measure, one of the measures for differences of uh, distributions. We have different measures for difference of distributions. One of them is maximum mean discrepancy. One of them is scale divergence. When two distributions are equal, uh, their moments, all, if all their moments match and they're equal, the ca their scale divergence is zero. And uh, if they are uh, dif more different than each other, uh, from each other, then uh, they have larger k divergence. So k divergence is defined according to definition is this uh, summation or, or integral over uh, qzi 
log of uh, which is natural log here qzi over pzi given xi and theta so if we uh, simplify this log the log of division becomes uh, log of numerator minus log of denominator uh, and then uh, according to equation 5 base rule here uh, we can have uh, we we replace this pzi with what we have here and uh, we simplify log of the uh, log of the fraction to log of numerator minus log of uh, denominator and we will have this term now let's simplify it more uh, you can see here that I am repeating I am repeating this uh, I'm, I'm t factoring out QZI so here we have factor out a QZI but if you see this term uh, is not a variable of ZI therefore it can be it can come out of integral and integral over DZI uh, integral of dzi over all domain becomes 1 therefore uh, this becomes uh, this log of probability times 1 sometimes my pen doesn't work okay so now uh, then we will have uh, q integral of qzi uh, uh, log of the, the other terms so now let's uh, move on to uh, simplify it further we, we can these three terms we can write it as log of fraction again you can see this here uh, then according we know that p of xi given zi pzi is p of joint distribution xi and zi we have this here we are using this characteristic uh, then this what is this this is definition of kl divergence between qzi and p probability of xi and zi given theta so we replace the, the second term with kl divergence and you can see that where did we start from uh, we started from this set k divergence of k qzi and pzi given xi equals this log of p xi given theta plus k if we rearrange this term we will have this boxed equation if we define this term um, this term minus k divergence of qzi and p xi and zi as uh, the uh, the lower bound this is elbo or evidence lower bound then uh, replacing this elbo in this box equation we will have uh, that equ uh, and rearranging that it will be uh, it will it will give us elbo equals log of p of uh, xi given theta minus the scale divergence a uh, scale divergence is always greater than or equal to zero therefore this term is always less than or equal to log of p, uh, xi given uh, theta so elbo you can see that is a lower bound why is it a lower bound because it is less, less than or equal to log, uh, log of p of xi and what is log of p of xi is the log likelihood uh, of uh, xi is a, uh, therefore we have a lower bound on the likelihood of data xi is a data set so I'm writing that formula, this formula again, by rearranging this. I'm just repeating that equation. You can see that uh, if we can fi uh, visualize this equation using this figure. Uh, assume that this this total thing is the lack likelihood that we have here in this side of equation. Uh, then ELBO is this. So this log likelihood is uh, the ELBO plus this KL divergence that we have here. Uh, and we want to, uh, because we, we always want in probabilistic approaches, we usually want to maximize the log likelihood of data. Uh, for that, 
uh, we can ma rather than maximizing the log likelihood of data which is this we can maximize the ELBO so we move this line to above and by this you are maximizing log likelihood this is a good technique in optimization usually sometimes it is hard to optimize uh, maximize uh, a function then we say that let's find uh, a lower bound uh, for this function and rather than maximizing that function let's maximize the lower bound on that function and uh, this uh, gives us this is a good technique in uh, optimization you can use so now we now that we have uh, defined ELBO that we are going to use la in later slides let's move on to expectation maximization what is expectation maximization the idea is that I'm writing the idea of uh, EM or expectation maximization in just a, an informal chat it says that we want to maximize the lock, uh, likelihood or we, uh, we want to have maximum likelihood estimation uh, however uh, some data are missing assume that some of the, some not we don't have all the data some of the data are missing what should we do we cannot have maximum likelihood estimation anymore then we say probably we can replace uh, the missing data with something but with what let us replace it with its mean so when we have some uh, uh, missing data even for uh, uh, removing for uh, compensating missing data in data sets uh, one technique is to replace them with the mean so let's uh, replace it with the mean and then uh, when we replace that with the mean all data are now found and uh, obvious uh, and then we can apply maximum likelihood estimation this is uh, the idea behind expectation maximization uh, so why uh, because expectation using expectation maximization has two steps expectation and maximization expectation finds the mean and uh, maximization just is like maximum likelihood estimation maximizes the lack likelihood so here uh, in our uh, uh, setup we have uh, the ELBO, do you remember that? We, we found it here. Uh, this is the equation for ELBO. Uh, here we say that we maximize it using ES, in ES step, we maximize it using Q, and then in M step, the variable was theta. Let's maximize the uh, ELBO using theta. This is e expectation maximization for variational inference that you are talking about. Okay now let's talk about ES step go into the details of ES step maximizing this ELBO with respect to Q which was the distribution on ZI if you remember uh, what was this ELBO do you remember this uh, I'm using this formula I'm using this this formula here uh, ELBO equals log of uh, probability of xi given theta minus scale divergence of q and pzi given xi. So if I replace this, uh, we will have this term. Uh, and we are maximizing uh, over q. Uh, then we say that um, maximization of minus a function is equal to minimization. So I replace that. And then we say. Uh, we want to minimize this term of KL divergence we know that KL divergence is always greater than or equal to zero so its minimum can be zero and by mean so we set it to this term to zero in order to minimize that and we know that when two distributions are equal when uh, uh, they are completely equal and they are they are all of their moments are equivalent uh, their KL divergence is zero therefore we set this distribution to this distribution and we will have this so we can say that QZI can be set to the conditional distribution of ZI given data XI uh, now let's move on to the uh, M step where the Q found in E step is used uh, what maxim we maximize the ELBO with respect to theta this time and now we use this f f f uh, formula for ELBO this time this formula this boxed equation if we replace that 
will say maximizing this minus scale divergence the definition of ELBO then according to the definition of scale divergence we have integral of this integral this is the definition of scale divergence Ma uh, and then uh, we can simplify this log of uh, fraction as log of numerator minus log of de denominator uh, then we will have this term the second term here this is a uh, constant with respect to theta therefore we can get rid of it we don't care about that so the the first term now uh, we care about uh, what is this this integral you can see this is the definition of expectation uh, over the distribution q so uh, expectation is uh, over a distribution q expect this is this is the formula expectation of fx can be written as integral of if it is in the uh, assume that it is over qzi the distribution qzi the, the, the definition is that integral of qzi fx dzi according to this 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 is a definition of expectation therefore we can replace this term with expectation and then now you can see that uh, theta is the argmax argument of this maximization that we have uh, that we found here so now Let's put these two formulas, this from M step and this from E step together. This is expectation maximization in variational inference. First, we uh, set QZI to the, the, the this conditional distribution of ZI given XI or uh, the distribution of latent um, uh, factor uh, conditioned on data and then theta will be the argument of maximization of expectation of log uh, joint distribution uh, uh, in the distribution of qzi now let's move on to variational autoencoder so far we explained what variational inference was variational autoencoder has three parts it it uses a uh, variational inference but in an autoencoder setup what is autoencoder autoencoder uh, is usually uh, we have an encoder and decoder uh, in in inc encoder uh, we, we feed data to this and we get something we encode data like z and decoder gets the encoded data z i and gives x back and uh, for training autoencoder sometimes uh, for the simple autoencoder uh, they say that we are reconstructing x at the uh, output of decoder so this must these two must be very similar to each other uh, this is the simple autoencoder but here we have variational autoencoder but it also has still has encoder and decoder and uh, the encoder part you can see that models uh, the probability of the conditional probability of zi given xi why because the in, its input is xi as i said here its input is xi is the data point and now we want to generate the in the latent space which is here in the latent space we want to generate the latent factor therefore we need uh, the encoder to model p of zi given xi then we have in the mid here will have zi and I will explain later in detail how we have zi then when we have zi the decoder models p of xi given zi in order to generate xi again or reconstruct xi again so this is the, I the general idea of variational autoencoder which was proposed in this paper and now let's go into the details of variational autoencoder uh, first the details of encoder as I said encoder models P of zi given xi or probability of a latent uh, factor given uh, the, the data uh, with some uh, parameter theta e e stands for encoder and theta is the weights uh, of these uh, these layers it might uh, this encoder might be several layers of neural network and this decoder also will be it can be several layers of uh, neural network 
so uh, with some activation functions possibly so that we have some uh, weights of uh, encoder if this distribution is Gaussian so that if it is Gaussian you, uh, we'll have a mean and uh, some uh, covariance matrix it's assumed it is a multivariate Gaussian distribution if it is multivariate we can say that uh, for simplicity usually people say that the covariance matrix uh, let, let it be a, a diagonal matrix so we won't have covariance terms we only have variances and uh, then the encoder what does encoder s does it says that uh, the output neurons of the encoder let them uh, model the parameters of the distribution of uh, qzi or pzi given xi so if it is gaussian what are uh, the this, uh, the parameters of this uh, gaussian it is this mean and this covariance uh, now i can say that the uh, some some sets of uh, the f the first set of output uh, neurons of encoder let them uh, model the mean of Gaussian distribution. The second set let them uh, model the diagonal elements of the covariance matrix. Uh, so we, you can consider any any distribution for this uh, QZI or PZI given XI. Uh, but you, the no output neurons of uh, in your encoder should model the parameters of the, those distributions that you choose. Uh, then after that uh, so when we feed xi to this encoder it gives me the parameters of this distribution now i have the probability density function for this uh, pzi given xi now i can s easily sample zi from pzi given xi let's sample the latent factor from this uh, latent distribution uh, in so in the middle uh, variational autoencoder samples zi from pzi given xi here we do that then we have zi let's feed this zi as we have here to decoder let's move on to decoder now. decoder of variational auto so decoder as i said models pxi given zi and theta d is the weights of the decoder part d stands for decoder and uh, so given zi i want to reconstruct or generate xi again this is uh, that's why variational auto autoencoder is a generative model because it generates or reconstructs xi from zi again then uh, this is uh, then finally we'll have uh, xi at the end now this is the uh, the structure of variational autoencoder let us learn the weights of theta d and theta e we need to learn that uh, we can train uh, variational autoencoder, autoencoder or learn the weights using expectation maximization as we had before but with some changes I will tell you so do you remember we had E step and M step uh, like we had before we had a maximization of ELBO we also have ELBO here and now beforehand in expectation maximization we had only theta one theta now we have two thetas theta E and theta D and here Q is uh, here uh, the ELBO is also a function of XI the data now the E step and M step each of which can be modeled uh, by gra gradient ascent why because it's maximization if it was minimization it would be gradient descent so and these are assume these are the learning rates and you can take derivative and uh, using the derivative uh, we can have gradient ascents in E step and M step but uh, let's simplify the ELBO because uh, how can we take the derivative let's simplify the ELBO and see what happens uh, in that usually in training uh, autoencoders and neural networks we have batches of data we don't train using the whole data set because the whole data set is huge and we also uh, we can have if we use the whole data set it's gradient ascent if we use every data point one by one it's a uh, stochastic gradient ascent but however if we use batches of data it is it is mini batch a stochastic gradient ascent uh, assume that the batch size is b 
so uh, we sum over the batch size uh, and uh, this is the ELBO uh, I replace ELBO with its definition which is minus the scale divergence do you remember this equation this boxed equation I'm replacing ELBO with this now I do that I replace QZI with what what uh, we had P of ZI given XI Y because if you remember QZI was according to equation 10 was PZI given XI uh, also we had found it beforehand in this equation Q, QZI was PZI given XI so here I, I replace QZI with that and then we say that uh, this is definition of KL divergence integral of this this integral is definition of KL divergence I, I replace that and then I can say that P of the joint distribution of XI and ZI can be written of probability of XI given ZI PZI so let's f uh, simplify further now I say the log of fraction is log of numerator minus log of denominator so I can this take this part and take this part separate these I will have this log and this log uh, then what is this this is definition of Kale divergence according to Kale divergence uh, definition of Kale divergence will ha it is Kale of uh, p of z i given x i and p of z i this what is this this is definition of expectation this is expectation of log of this function uh, with respect to this distribution so what we have found so far is this the the summation of uh, elbo over the batch is this the second term here uh, can be estimated using Monte Carlo approximation you can read our tutorial on uh, Monte Carlo uh, methods uh, for this and uh, what is this we, we can always uh, approximate the expectation using this Monte Carlo approximation by just sampling from the, that distribution the more samples uh, we draw uh, the, the better the approximation is so assume that we ha have a draw L samples Z I J J go goes from 1 to L J is the, is the index of sample and we, ha we are sampling for Z I uh, in order from this distribution and we replace this expectation with this with this average uh, this is Monte Carlo approximation so that's why we have an approximation sign here and we uh, show the approximated ELBO using tilde L. L. Then, what we have found so far is this. This is what we found in previous slide. Uh, so, what is this? We can write. This can be written uh, according to the the definition of Kale divergence it can be written in uh, integral form do you remember we can write it write this in integral form and again again according to the expectation definition of expectation that can be written in this so first this term is uh, simplified to the integral of some term according to the, defini the definition of Kale divergence and then it is converted to expectation according to the definition of expectation we this term as before then here we say this expectation also can be approximated by uh, using uh, the Monte Carlo approximation so here uh, as before we have this uh, we have this from from another approximation and the, this log has come from this uh, because we say that log of uh, fraction is log of numerator minus log of denominator so this has we have simplified uh, the ELBO using Monte Carlo approximation 
Now here, what uh, do you remember what we had in equation 19 here? This we can simplify ELBO in another way. So this is one way in in slide 22. Uh, here we are simplifying it another way. Do you remember we had this? If we have multivariate Gaussian distribution, we can uh, rather than sim uh, approximating the scale divergence using Monte Carlo approximation, well, as we did in equation in slide 22, we can uh, have a formula for the scale divergence if it is a multivariate Gaussian distribution. So there is a, a proposition in our tutorial paper. You can read that, uh, and it has a proof there that if this probability and this probability are both ga multivariate Gaussian distributions their Kale divergence is has a formula which is this so we can use this as the e summation over as the summation of ELBO over the batch now you c we can use in the expectation maximization rather than you remember here we had rather than the exact ELBO, we can approximate it. Uh, we can take derivative of approximated uh, ELBO with respect to var variables. E step, you can see E step trains uh, the weights of encoder, M step trains the weights of decoder. And it makes sense. Why do you remember? Because what was uh, in variational autoencoder, we are. Uh, in encoder is modeling qzi which is p of zi given xi and do you remember here we also in expectation maximization of variational inference in the answer of uh, e step was qzi is equal to pzi given xi that's why this makes sense uh, okay now let's move on there is a reparameterization trick or technique and i tell you what it is there is a problem uh, if we use this uh, training uh, for variational autoencoder. There is a problem here. What is the problem? The problem is that uh, here we are sampling here in this figure. We are sampling zi from is a uh, probability of zi given xi, and this sampling uh, makes backpropagation or expectation maximization or gradient descent uh, uh, gives it a hard time because uh, the, the gradients cannot be back propagated uh, so we use a pr technique where we say that rather than sampling zi from pzi uh, and xi we, we say zi is a, a deterministic function of another random variable epsilon i and this epsilon i is a random variable uh, with some dis, uh, distribution. Uh, why do we do that? Because this sampling of zi, if we consider zi to be uh, stochastic, then the variance of estimation in backpropagation uh, goes uh, uh, and goes makes is gets larger. However, when we uh, apply this technique, uh, the variance of estimation goes down it's, uh, it will have more accurate backpropagation so this expectation of fzi uh, in this uh, probability is replaced with expectation of fg of epsilon you remember this we had expectation of fzi in this probability we had it here let me find it here Here we had it, this expectation, uh, but uh, this is the fzi. But this fzi, rather than z uh, i sam being sampled, we can say that i is a function, a deterministic function of epsilon i, and epsilon i is sampled. This is called a reparameterization re trick. Uh, an example is that assume that zi is uh, the normal uh, univariate normal distribution of mu sigma. Uh, squared uh, if epsilon i is n uh, the standard normal distribution z i can be mu plus sigma epsilon i uh, which is a deterministic function 
also uh, finally in practice we can say that variational autoencoder is trained by backpropagation we don't uh, these days people don't use expectation maximization as we see here for training uh, variational autoencoder uh, so they said let's not separate the weights of encoder and decoder uh, and uh, solve them uh, or train them iteratively it's like an alternating optimization approach that they have in expectation maximization but here uh, we say that uh, let's consider all weights together of encoder and decoder and train them using backpropagation and why do I say this I have replaced that plus with minus minus so I, s I have said the let the loss be negative loss and I use gradient descent because backpropagation is usually uses gradient descent rather than gradient ascent because we in neural network you usually minimize the loss function examples uh, you can see that the embedding of MNIST data set in the latent space this is the uh, latent space uh, and ZI is sampled from this uh, latent space and you can see that uh, these are the embeddings or ZIs of MNIST and the classes have been separated well enough and uh, this is good and you can sample from ZI here and uh, generate new data points so when first assume that when you sample ZI, assume that your Z sample ZI is this, it you, it will with high probability it will generate uh, the point zero because this cl it is close to zero points. If uh, my ZI is sampled from here, uh, the output of decoder will be probably six. I think this is the digit six. And uh, so uh, here we have a probability distribution of ZI given uh, XI. Now, uh, this also, this embedding space is meaningful. Why? Uh, because if you see, for example, uh, let me see here, uh, the similar digits are close to each other. For example, this red is 9, this is 0. Be 9 and 0, with some tweak, 9 becomes similar to 0. Uh, so I'm saying that the embedding is uh, very very interpretable and you can see this here too uh, the, what we are doing here we are saying that let us uh, plot the manifold or the embedding space or the latent space of the variational autoencoder why because we can always uh, sample zi we can go in in a grid we can go in a grid and sample zi and generate the uh, xi corresponding this to the sampled zi's and these are the generated xi's uh, the output of decoders uh, for zi's which are sampled in a grid in the uh, embedding space and you can see that uh, this these are very meaningful and you can see how uh, we are interpolating through different digits so we are starting from zero and zero is uh, gradually changed to six and then to five then 5 is gradually changed to 1 and 1 is gradually changed to 9 here and 1 ch changes to 7 7 to 9 9 to 3 and 3 9 to 3 3 to 5 3 to 2 and all of these you can see now you can interpret the uh, learned the trained embedding space very well there are uh, some useful resources to read our tutorial paper on factor analysis, probabilistic PCA, variational inference, and variational autoencoder. There are you tutorial YouTube videos by Carnegie Mellon University Deep Learning. You can check out their uh, YouTube channel, which is very great. Uh, there is tutorial on variational autoencoder. Also, there is a, a website for Keras code for variational autoencoder. The reference is uh, this is the original paper for variational autoencoder which used variational inference in a variational in a autoencoder uh, setup this is our tutorial for monte carlo approximation and sampling this is 
the paper which said that let's use backpropagation for training variational autoencoder rather than expectation maximization. This is our tutorial paper for factor analysis, PC, probabilistic PCA, variational inference, and variational autoencoder. And this is a tutorial paper on variational autoencoder. Okay, I hope this was uh, helpful and have fun. Thank you.